Communication is one of these power skills that people talk about quite a bit, uh, especially when it comes to employment or even when it comes to uh, education and the learning process. Uh, I kind of boil down communication to two kind of components. Uh, one is about uh, understanding, it's just about uh, information and exchanging information, and the other is about persuasion, so trying to influence another person's uh, thoughts, behaviors, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And I don't think persuasion in this context is, is kind of a bad word. I think a lot of the communication we do in life is meant to be persuasive. We try to persuade children to act a certain way. I try to persuade my students to do certain things. Uh, we try to persuade each other as you know partners and friends and co-workers uh, to think different ways or to act in different ways. And I think persuasion is a very uh, important method or important uh, way of communicating. Um, but I want to point out that there are some really ineffective, I guess long-term ineffective ways of communicating. They may be, commu they may be effective in the short term, uh, but in the long term to kind of influence another person's behavior, they tend to be very ineffective. Uh, so things like withdrawal, and that's really the kind of the elimination of the possibility to communicate. So if you're withdrawing from a conversation, if you're withdrawing from a dialogue, uh, that can really influence another person's behavior, can cause them to try to, okay, well, what needs do you have that I can meet? Uh, but it tends to be only temporary until that withdrawal, you know, that withdrawal is no longer there until the person re-enters the conversation, then the behavior tends to revert to what it was. Uh, aggression is the same sort of thing, so you can be very aggressive in your communication and that might influence somebody for a very short period of time, but then once that aggressiveness kind of uh, dies down, then people tend to go back and they revert to their other behaviors. And then the last one is just guilt. So giving people guilt trips can be really effective in the short term and long term it can be really, really ineffective. So we're talking about communication and trying to uh, effectively exchange knowledge and persuade people uh, to change their ways, change their behaviors, or change their ways of thinking. Um, one of the ways of communication that I've most recently been both experimenting with and exposed to, uh, thanks to one of my dear friends and colleagues, uh, is a form of communication called nonviolent communication. Uh, and it's really just a framework, a, more or less a structure for how we communicate to each other uh, in a way that is not aggressive, not uh, trying to withdraw into yourself, and not trying to make another person feel guilty. It's a form of communication that provokes and instills empathy which is one of the key drivers for understanding each other's perspectives in the world and for engaging a person in uh, what kinds of activities we want them to, to be involved in or want them to do and want them to act upon. So the Nonviolent Communication Framework, not my idea, uh, it's a great book if you just Google Nonviolent Communication, fantastic book. Uh, it'll give you a really good structure for it or a really good way of understanding it. Uh, but the short version here is just to start with an expression, uh, a, an observation of what you see or what you observe uh, in a way that's non-judgmental. So it's uh, telling another person, well I see you've done this or I understand what you've done here. I uh, try to express very concretely what it is that you've done from a very objective point of view without making a subjective uh, judgment about what they've done. Then move from the observation into uh, an expression of your feeling. How do you feel about that? I feel angry, upset, confused because, and then locate that feeling in yourself because I imagine, because I think, because I hope, because I want. Uh, those are the, the, the ways you kind of express your feelings effectively without locating them in another's behaviors, but locating in your own ways of thinking. So start off with I observe, I see, then I feel, and then you move into I need. So what do you need in order to feel whole, in order to feel complete, in order to feel happy, in order to feel content? So express a need to the person, and then finally, uh, reframe that need in a way that is a concrete request to that person. So I need to know that I'm valued, uh, that my work matters. Uh, are you willing 
to do this, this, and this, to do X, Y, and Z, and give them a very concrete request. Don't give them, are you willing to stop doing this? That's not a concrete request. Nobody can really stop doing anything, but they can actively do something. And so if you give them that active doing and not a inactive, more ambiguous not doing or not thinking or whatever else it might be, but give them an concrete active request uh, that can go a long way towards provoking empathy in both parties and ensuring that clear communication is, uh, is, is made possible.